Optical activity can be useful in organic chemistry as a way to help distinguish between chiral molecules. Chiral molecules are similar to their enantiomers in many ways, but one thing that's different is that they rotate plane polarized light in a different direction. So full, first we'll discuss plane polarized light. Essentially what happens is a moving photon can be described by a changing electrical and magnetic field. So you could have an electrical field that's sort of going in an up and down orientation, whereas another could be going sideways. And what happens is when you take that light and you put it through a device called a polarimeter, the polarimeter screens out all of the waves of the photon other than the ones with one specific electric field orientation. So perhaps it will only select for the vertical orientation of electric field. And what that does then is it creates plane polarized light or PPL. And plane polarized light is something that then we can track and we can use a receiver to see how much did that light rotate. It needs to be plane polarized in order for you to measure rotation because you need to have some standard starting value for what the electrical field was like initially and then see how it changes as it moves through the sample. And so, as mentioned, chiral molecules rotate plane polarized light differently from their enantiomers. And this creates something called observed rotation. Observed rotation is the direction that a compound rotates plane polarized light, as well as the degree to which it does that. If it rotates it clockwise, then it's called D or plus or dextro-rotatory. If it rotates the plane polarized light counterclockwise, then it's called L minus or levo rotatory, meaning that it's a leftward rotation. One thing to be very aware of is that D and L are unrelated to R and S. So even though R and S, the absolute configurations, also refer to clockwise for R and counterclockwise for S, that is a man-made way that we've used to classify things based upon priorities that we assign to the different substituents. D and L, or dextro and levo rotatory, are experimentally determined values, and they're not related directly to our absolute configuration and how we choose to name molecules as R or S. So D doesn't mean R. D can be S, or it could be R. Either one works. Once we have observed rotation, then we get to an experimental value called specific rotation. Specific rotation is something that con considers the observed rotation, but it normalizes the values and standardizes them so that it's for one very specific wavelength, it's over the same distance of the path, and the same concentration of the compound that you're putting the light through. And so this helps us standardize these values and get a set of values that are normalized so that we can compare the degree to which different compounds rotate that plane polarized light. So observed rotation and specific rotation are very, very closely related. The only difference is that specific rotation has very, very standard principles using a specific type of wavelength, a specific direction of the path traveled by that light, and a specific concentration of the compound so that everything is sort of on an even playing field and we can compare the degree to which different compounds rotate that plane polarized light. If they rotate something, then compounds or mixtures are called optically active. If they don't rotate it, if there's no net rotation, then they're optically inactive. One thing that you can think about is that these must have no chiral molecules. If there are no chiral molecules, there is no optical activity of rotating light one way or the other. You could also see something where it's a racemic mixture or a racemate, which means that you do have these chiral compounds, but they're in equal concentrations, and so they cancel each other out. Another example is perhaps a meso compound, which we'll be discussing in a different video where it is its own enantiomer, and so the same compound rotates the light clockwise and counterclockwise. Anything where you have a mixture that has equal parts dextro-rotatory and levo-rotatory, that's considered a racemic mixture. And yes, it does have optically active individual molecules, but the mixture or compound itself 
will be described as optically inactive. So there are no chiral molecules or they are in equal concentration, so there is no net rotation. The last thing that we'll discuss with optical activity and the measurement of it is optical purity, which is very similar to enantiomeric purity. And what this means is that based on the degree to which it rotates the light in one direction or another, you can figure out a lot about a mixture by seeing how it does this. So if you're, and notice that I did the S and D forms being the same here to really drive home that point that R and D aren't necessarily related. It could be considered an R absolute configuration, but it could be levo rotatory. Here we have the S form, which happens to also be the D form. And that rotates the light 15 degrees in the clockwise direction. Here we have the R and L form, which rotates at 15 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. And clearly this is specific rotation because we've normalized these values. Now, for example, if we see a mixture where the net rotation is five degrees in the counterclockwise direction, we can find out a lot about the mix of enantiomers within that mixture. And so, obviously, because of the fact that it rotates it a net counterclockwise direction, that means we must have more of the L form than we have of the D form. The next thing is calculating exactly what concentrations we have of each form. And the best way to look at this is to look at the total net rotation being the amount of excess of one form or the other. And so what we see here is that this is one third of if it was the pure L form. And so what that means is we have an excess of one third of the L form is the excess there. So we have a bit more of the L form than the other. And so this tells us about how much is excess. And what we know then is the remaining part must be completely racemic. You must have equal parts D and L in the remaining two thirds of that. So those remaining two thirds are going to be split equally between the D and L form. So that means you get an additional third that is the L form and an additional third that is the D form from those remaining two thirds that cancel out. So what we have is one third that is excess pure L form, and the rest is those two thirds that cancel each other out, which are both L and D. And what that means is we end up with one third of the D form and two thirds of the L form overall. And this one third of the L form here is the excess. And we can calculate that excess by the fact that the net rotation is one third of what you would see with pure L form. That means that the excess is accounting for that. So therefore, it must have a third of the mixture be excess L, whereas the rest of it is evenly split. So those remaining two thirds are split equally between the D and the L form. So when we say optical purity mirrors enantiomeric purity, basically, you can learn a lot by looking at the specific rotation of the total mixture and seeing whether it favors the L or D form. And then that will tell us a lot of information about what the mixture of enantiomers is in that mixture. And so the things to remember about optical activity are that they are useful primarily for helping us figure out what different chiral molecules we have because we can distinguish chiral molecules by optical activity and very few other procedures. And remember that the polarimeter, which screens for that plane polarized light, lets us observe the rotation. Which rotation do we see when we shoot that light through a compound? And then we can get to specific rotation, which is normalized standardized values. And then the most complicated thing you'll probably see is an optical purity question. And the thing to remember is that the net rotation is accounted for by the excess of one of the enantiomeric forms. Anything that isn't part of that excess will be a racemic mixture of both D and L, and they will be divided evenly. And so that will help you do some very difficult looking questions about optical activity by realizing what this means when the net mixture rotates it slightly different than a pure mixture would.